So, um, next speaker is Anshumali Bhushan Didanesis. Ashmali is an entrepreneur from India who is working in EOT for Smart Grid in Gas and Water and is co-founder of Genesis. Good morning to all. Mr. Chandra, the President, my fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen in this August house. Uh, myself, I'm Anshumali. I'm co-founder of a technology company called Genesis. Uh, we have uh, around a decade of experience with, I mean, developing technology in India for uh, Indian utilities, Indian defense, and the whole journey has been full with products that have been developed based on the actual experiences of our customers, the problems that they had, the solutions that we could thought could solve those problems. So here I present to you our uh, two very recent, uh, you know, uh, last two years of development that we have done, and uh, the road that has been crossed to work with, uh, you know, premium Navratna companies like IGL, especially in the area of gas, which is not only very sensitive, but also <coughs> explosive prone environment and also in water, which we have recently started. <coughs> so here, what we call ourselves from retro to futuristic. And here, the smart solutions that Genesis is developing right now is taking a view not only for India, but also for the entire <coughs> worldwide market which is currently having a great installation base, base of old uh, technology, maybe ge meter, uh, geared meters or AMR compatible meters. So the vision, the vision is a very important thing for us because how we see utilities to work with, utilities typically like municipalities or uh, gas companies or energy companies have a very long horizon of work. They don't see very small steps. They actually have to look into 10 years or 20 years of life cycles. So we look how the, the, how the utilities can realize their maximum investment. The return of investment has to be very, very great. And at the same time, the level of a smartness should also be the best in the whole game. And the need. So what Mr. Chandra also mentioned today, in the, 90, in the 60s, it was produced more. In the, 90, in the 90s, it was to conserve more. And today, we talk about smartness. So yes, the journey has been that way. So initially, you know, because everything was thin, so you wanted to make sure that you should have as much as possible. And finally, when, uh, you know, the proliferation was absolutely going in a uh, out of the way direction, then we thought about how to save. And today, we want to produce only that much just in time inventory what uh, Michael Dell once said. So that, that concept from computers has today come to all utilities and that's what is smart. Just produce what you need, consume that and make sure you don't waste any of the things. So this is the need and the vision that uh, Genesis set out with and how we address the market. <coughs> so first of all, <coughs> any utility, the products that they buy is from a regulatory perspective. So everything that a company in technology or a service provider has to do, has to do with all the regulations. So if a smart metering is the vision, so we have to move towards that vision with financial incentives that the municipality may provide or the consumer may decide. And the functional requirements have to be set by some of the government agencies or the functional requirements can be set by the municipalities themselves, which all requires how frequently you can read the meter. So that's, that's the basic data that would tell you that how much you actually require as a whole. So here the industry overview and the benefit drivers that we saw from our perspectives around two years back and which propelled our team to develop a product that could suit to this industry. So the pain points are commercial losses due to there is no automation in the current flow. Second is a very human dependent exercise. So as Mr. Chandra also said, 21% or 27% of gas meters cannot be read due to closed premises. Similarly, in the water sector, it's very difficult. I mean, the old meters, they have moisture, they have got humidity, all those things. Very difficult to go and get all the readings done. And believe me, it cannot be, I mean, I'm, I truly agree with the point that it cannot be a public good unless you read everything and you actually bill them for it. It has to be metered and it has to be uh, paid for. That's, that's the whole concept of making a smart city. Third, and a very challenging and dispar dispassionate point is standardization. So any utility, when it procures a technology, 
it cannot be a vendor focused technology it will be you know like a tendering or a procurement which could be x meter today and y meter tomorrow so it's a very very challenging path to work with all those meters and create a single standard database of the usage of the gas or water whatever is flowing fourth is a long cash cycle so because that it costs utilities to you know take a reading they basically postpone the readings by a quarter sometimes by yearly cycle sometimes so very difficulty you know working on those parameters i mean the fastest that igl works is in two months so that that's a cash cycle and if there is a close premises it takes a quarter to reconcile that reading so this is another pain point that they have got and then if by chance a bill is not correct then you have got averaged reading which is another software issue so you then need to make sure how to make uh, that average assessment you know come up into the next bill or to the next bill or at the end of the year you have to do all the adjustments we all have seen our bills you know they have got those adjustments mentioned in the bottom and the last is uh, a typical thing the disputes the legal portion where the consumer always wants to say that you have billed me incorrectly and how do i make sure that what you are reading is correct all the time so all this we converted into a statement and we said that we need to develop a efficient system to manage procurement and supply gap which is a smart thing so we need to procure either gas or water only that much that we need to use and that is the supply so how to nominate your gas or a water demand based on accurate metering and getting that metering data in the most reliable way to your data centers so uh, a question which you may ask is retro really a choice with all the available smart meters now coming up in the market and uh, all these equipments are there so why is retro still a choice so we compare them yes so cost of product number one because uh, ultimately you have to compete in a market so the cost of product is appreciably less second you don't have to remove the old meters so the old remove meters remain where they are so there is no removal of the old meters it remains where they are there is just a add on hardware which gets and get fixed to that meter asset third it were it is meter agnostic so we don't have a meter brand that we can only read so we can read all brands of meter rather so it is a meter agnostic technology whatever we do has to work with the entire realm of metering space fifth the back end that we develop the cloud the the the, the, the data where, where the data gets stored has to be compliant not only with the oldest meter but also with the latest smart meters so that the utility when they invest into this kind of solution so not only they are able to convert all their existing meters into smart but when they procure new meters the same cloud should be able to serve their purpose so these are the advantages you know which when you compare vis a vis with the smart meters that are available you can easily say why retro could be a choice so as we offer right now so the components of the solution as i said is typically the meters that you have got either water or gas and the cloud so these are the two components that we are going to talk about i'll just skip this i mean although this slide has got some additional features that uh, we have put in especially in the area of gas because gas also requires a lot of uh, alerts in terms of gas leaks so additionally additional to metering that we do we also you know give a sensory alert if there is a gas leak so we have embedded gas sense gas leak sensors all those into the meters as well and a negligible cost of maintenance so here is a small sample model that you know what uh, what a simple innovation can look like and here you see i mean this is a simple gas meter which has been converted into a complete smart meter with a visual reading with a smart reading with a amr reading and you can fit it over all kinds of mechanical meters you have the image of meter reading you have the amr reading if it is supported by the meter you can have remote disconnects meter data and image for monthly cycles as well as on demand so in case there is a dispute you can just switch on that particular address that particular meter and read it on demand and we work with rf and lora meshes and gprs so it's a complete solution so this is a network diagram you know a simple deployment that we are doing currently in which you can see we are reading meters over a rf mesh or a lora mesh bringing the data to the data concentrators and then switching the data over to the cloud 
which can be shared with the utility over a secure VPN and to the consumers over public internet. So in terms of components, uh, a bit of detail, I mean, it's a meter interface unit which is completely IP65 capable with AMR, with LED flash. So even if it is dark, it gets your reading there. And it's retro capable for most gas and water readers. Uh, and the data transfer unit, it works on RF and GSM. It has a battery backup of around nine years. So six to nine years, six years over GSM and nine years over uh, RF without replacing the dry cell. That's what we have uh, you know, achieved. It is uh, again IP65 wall mounted unit and supports on demand metering. So you can address any individual meter in your network from the server side and internal memory for storing 3000 data points as well. And the cloud is a layer four cloud and certified. And last year we won the National Productivity Council's award for innovation for this product as well. So this is like a simple image that comes up you know, from the solution. So how do we uh, bring the data word about of the cloud, so the cloud applications that we have built up and it's completely compliant to any, any OS, any platform, you can run it anywhere from any box. So there's a consumer self self service portal which can be accessed not only by the consumers but also by the corporate users. You log in, you see a particular consumer name and then the last image date, meter serial number, reading date and then there's a map view which can show exactly where the asset is and this map view goes into a very great detail. So once the utility management, they want to look at their high revenue loss areas, low revenue loss areas, and revenue gain areas, they can actually make a very good assessment just by looking at these maps. What are the areas that they're addressing? And then this is like the, for a particular consumer, if he logs in, he sees all kinds of anal analytics of last month's usage, uh, one month back usage, all kind of usages are there with charges. If a utility wants to see like the bill graph, how the it is faring, so all kind of analytics tools are built in. So this is real time live monitoring. So if you want to address a single meter in case of a dispute or a challenge by a consumer, just log into his or her account and just take out the image at that instant of that meter and that fix that dispute. So a priority is, you know, address these concerns as quickly as possible. So there is no legal hassle for the uh, I mean, utility. And then it is powered by analytics, which is, I mean, what I say to all my customer partners that we work with, like may minimum after 24 months of operation, you would have exact data of all festivals, of all kinds of events that a particular Indian or a, any household faces in a particular calendar cycle. So in Holi, you would exactly know how much water you need. You would know exactly how much gas you need in Dipavli. All these analytics will be available to you to nominate your purchases before that season or that time of the day comes. So this is uh, about installation. So it's pretty easy. I mean, you go to the place, you strap on the thing, you test it once, you note all the assets that are there, take a picture and get out of there. So that's once done and it's working now. So currently uh, we are running, uh, we are going to run a pilot with Impress Gas for gas. And with the JUSCO, we are uh, uh, aiming to do a pilot in April 2017 for the water meters. So that's pretty much about what we have done. And I'm open for any questions if you've got after this session. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bushnam.